Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares has been off the air since 2014, but the show still commands the love of millions of fans. So how much do they really know about the series? Here's a look at what the biggest fans don't really know about Kitchen Nightmares. You're familiar with the Kitchen Nightmares formula, right? Ramsay comes into a failing restaurant, berates owners and staff alike, and bullies them into being better with a lot of screaming and swearing. But that's not what UK viewers saw in the original British version of Kitchen Nightmares. Across the pond, Ramsay, who narrated the series himself, was a much calmer and more understanding mentor. There was some yelling, sure, but nothing on the scale of the US version. The American version is so different, you'll have to wonder if he's actually someone else wearing a Gordon Ramsay skin suit. And it's a shame Americans don't get to see that nicer side of him very often. I've never seen such hard work for 11 guests. No. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make you feel good, does it? No, not really. During the first season of Kitchen Nightmares in 2007, Ramsay and his team actually gave a helping hand to an ex-mobster. Peter's was a New York restaurant featured on an episode where the problem was the owner's extravagant spending. It only came out later when Gangland News uncovered an FBI report from 2003 that said Peter Pasta Pellegrino had been a recently made man associated with the Bonanno crime family. There were a lot of restaurant owners that are married to their business day and night, but I choose not to live my life that way. Pellegrino, who reportedly had been kicked out of the mob before appearing on Kitchen Nightmares, had nothing good to say about the way he was portrayed on the show. He told Gangland News, That makes me look like some kind of animal, and worse, it's a real-life nightmare. Honestly, I think he's hoping for a shot at the next Goodfellas movie. Just when I thought I was out. They pull me back in. There have been a lot of accusations leveled at Ramsay and his show, including claims that the show's team plants a lot of the rotten food he finds and that all of those incredibly grossed-out customers that sit down to eat are paid actors. According to The Guardian, Ramsay doesn't take the accusations lightly, and after one newspaper published stories about fakery, he sued for libel and won. But there's one claim that might have some weight to it. In the credits, there's a disclaimer stating, "...the producers may have provided customers at the restaurant with a financial contribution towards the cost of their meal." Though this is far short of the accusation that the customers are paid actors, it does seem as though they received some compensation, if only in the form of free food. Which is fair. After all, considering how bad the food is in most episodes, would you really want to make people pay for it? The decision to go vegetarian isn't one for everyone, but it's simple enough to respect it. Or it should be. But Ramsay famously seems to have some kind of personal grudge against all vegetarians, something that came out in a particularly cruel prank on the UK version of Kitchen Nightmares, where he tricked a vegetarian into eating ham. Unfortunately, that's got lots of mozzarella and tomato, but underneath that <laughs> is Parma ham. Oh no, that was me. Thank you. Good luck with the Vegemite. The incident brought swift backlash from both the media and chefs across Britain, as many vegetarians have ethical, religious, and dietary reasons for avoiding meat. Violating that choice isn't just disrespectful, it's also potentially dangerous. Something Ramsay should know. Just not quite ready for the, uh, for the red meat. Don't you worry about that. I'll eat it. 